Konnichiwa, minasan. Welcome to An Amazing, where I review and discuss anime. I'm doing something new today called Premature Reaction, where I only talk about the first episode and give you my premature, undercooked opinions about it. Today, I'm diving headfirst into Kiznaiva. I don't know how to say it in English. Kiznaiva? Kiznaiva? So let's start from the very beginning. The scene opens up with a young Katsuhira in a super stylized sequence with a lot of red. In fact, everything is red. Among all the redness, we see a ghost white girl with white hair and a white hospital gown ominously telling Katsuhira that he's not like the rest of them and that he can get his pain back. What? Okay, now we know what it looks like, so let's talk about the animation studio that brought Kiznaiva to us. Trigger, or Studio Trigger, was founded by Imaishi Hiroyuki and Otsuka Masahiko, who are both from Gainax. Gainax is best known for Tengen Toppa Guren Lagan, and Trigger is best known for Kill la Kill, and now you can see why they kind of sort of look similar. Sort of. The opening is great, by the way. It has the perfect feeling to it. I love that the animation doesn't spoil anything, because unfortunately that happens in anime pretty often. You basically just see the main cast in it. The song is called Lay Your Hands On Me, and it's by Boom Boom Satellites. Now let's get back to the story. We skip 12 years into the future to present time. We're in Sugomori City, a futuristic Japan of sorts. We meet Chidori, who seems like Katsuhira's osananajimi, or childhood friend, who is voiced by Terasaki Yuka. Oh, by the way, Agatha Katsuhira is voiced by Kajiyuki. <laughs> we learn that Katsuhira is being bullied and has been bullied all his life. The surprise factor is that he doesn't feel any pain. He's impervious to it. It sounds cool, right? Sadly, no, because it kind of plagues him since he's fallen into a cycle of paying off his bullies. But that's okay, because that's when Tenga flies in with his butt, but first, literally, to save the day. Tenga Hajime is voiced by Mae no Tomaki. Tenga promises to not only get the money back that the bullies had taken from Katsuhira, but also to make sure that they never come near him again. But in return, he wants 20% of the money that he gets back. That's okay, that's straightforward, I like that. Katsuhira explains that he doesn't actually feel that much pain, and while Tenga is testing the limits of that, Sonozaki enters the scene. But only for a hot second, and then suddenly they're on the roof. What's happening? It's clear Sonozaki, who's voiced by Yamamoto Hibiku, is the key to the plot. She starts explaining about the seven deadly sins and how it's emerged in different forms in modern times. Some of the terms, or titles rather, that she uses were things like the cunning normal, the high and mighty, the goody two-shoes, the eccentric headcase, and the imbecile. And she already has people in mind that fit those sin categories perfectly. She also explains to Katsuhira why he's getting bullied, and it's because he isn't afraid. According to Sonozaki, everybody wants to be special to someone, be it a positive positive or negative thing, and sadly for Katsuhira, because he doesn't feel pain or express emotions that are recognizable, people can't find themselves within him, and therefore they can't connect, so they bully. There's also a lot of crap about how the world is in a state of unrest, and there's a lot of fighting that occurs because we can't feel each other's emotions, and then, suddenly, Sonozaki tells Katsuhira to put his hands up and pushes him down the stairs, backwards. Then we get a fun, trippy-ass Gomore Hospital disco scene, and we learn that Katsuhira is alive. He's brought into a room with Sonozaki waiting in it, and that's when Sonozaki explains the Kizuna system to everyone she kidnapped. Yeah, did I forget to mention that? She kidnapped everyone who she believes fits the description of the Seven Sins. And that's not all, she also had them surgically implanted or surgically connected or something to each other so they can share each other's pain. She even claims that Katsuhira survived the fall because everyone shared his pain. This part weirded me out because she says that Katsuhira Katsuhira voluntarily jumped off the stairs, but that's so not what happened. We'll see if that makes an impact later or if it just fizzles. Anyway, Sonozaki wants world peace, and she thinks this Kizuna system is the way to go about it. No one believes her, rightfully so, but Katsuhira is interested in what she has to say, so he hangs back while everybody leaves. Then, Tenga decides to be a perv that he is and touch Nico's boobers because Nico believes they're all in her dream. Nico hits him hard, and everyone feels it. This was one of my favorite moments. I love when the whole screen distorts. I wasn't expecting it and it like felt right. The first episode ends with Sonozaki taser and Katsuhira and everyone feeling it. Katsuhira has some blood spurt out of him and he for the first time looks like he's in labored pain. Then their wounds, all of their wounds start to glow and something crazy happens and they're all connected. Sonozaki finally explains that the Sugomori motto, one for all, all for one, should actually be one for all, all for glory and says from today you are all Kiznaiva. This isn't the best first episode I've ever seen. It didn't have me jaw dropped and clawing at the screen to bring me to the next episode, but I am obviously going to continue watching it. I think I had a hard time connecting with it because I don't subscribe to Sonozaki's view of the world and I find it hard to relate to Katsuhira or any of the other characters really. But I will continue watching it, like I said, to see how everything unfolds, and I'm a really big Trigger Gainax fangirl, so I obviously love how it's all animated. My favorite thing about the animation in Kiznaiva is, so far, the eyes. There's a beautiful glint in everyone's eyes that's 
so captivating it makes it hard to look away. I also really, really love how Katsuhira is presented. It looks like he's in the shadows and only his eyes have that highlight to them. It might be to express parallelism with his inability to feel pain or maybe his stoic personality in general. What did you think of the first episode of Kizunaiva? Did it make you want to keep watching? What characters are interesting to you so far? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video to help spread the anime love. And thanks for watching my very first episode of Premature Reaction. Sanja matane!